living like you. There's a lot of rich people in the world, but there's not a lot of rich people living like you. So first of all, before we even get started, I salute you, sir. I went broke, so I was just like, it was a, it was a wild ride. Oh, uh, this guy, How dude. How good is Dan Bilzerian actually at poker? Where did Dan get his money from? How, you may ask, does this billionaire playboy philanthropist This guy. Yeah, I beat one guy for 54 million. I mean, I won 10 and a half on another night. I beat another guy for 10. He claims to have won over $50 million in one year of playing poker. He's the son of convicted corporate fraudster Paul Bilzerian. The trust fund Ponzi scheme inheriting pseudo commando wannabe Kirkland brand Hugh Hefner. Paul Bilzerian, a Wall Street felon. I think Knight is dead in the water. We're just waiting for the official announcement. They have no cash, they have no operations. Nothing is going on with Ignite. It's game over. There was always something a little bit weird about him, don't you think? Whether it was an inability to accept the reality of his eccentric lifestyle or the prolonged awkwardness whenever anyone guys, asked Guys, guys, isn't he told, guys, he took, guys, he took so many pictures with, with hot girls, girls that are literally naked. I saw so many titties and nipple on his pictures, an insane amount, dude. Can we scan the video and make sure we don't get a fucking How much juicer? money have you made playing poker? I don't know, I, I mean... Something felt off every time. So when an overwhelming array of evidence came forward regarding the fake golden facade of Dan Bilzerian's dream lifestyle, I think it's safe to say that no one was all that surprised. But the real question might be, how did he even get to the point of having that fake golden facade? And how did it all come crashing down? How did Dan Bilzerian go from a dude who got kicked out of high school for bringing guns to school? I kicked out of high school and Join the military. To a guy living almost the dream lifestyle. To a guy who's being roasted by every corner of the internet for being a fake and a fraud the entire time. After hours of extensive research, I bring you the rise and fall of a man who built his life on a lie. Dan Bilzerian. Kinda of badass though, be honest, sorry. Lavish holidays, high status, the ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want. All aspects of the filthy rich what? lifestyle. I'll set the scene for you. It's I mean, the 1980s. I mean, paid or not, fake or not, he still kind of did it. It was still on the yachts with a, bu with a bunch of cool shit. With a bunch of like cars and guns and shit. I guess it's, I guess it's, it's content. New York, I guess Wall I don't Street give a specifically. Shit. Suits with shoulder pads, pants with suspenders, and when dodgy Wall Street raiders were abusing financial loopholes to make cash hand over fist. One of these slick Wall Street swindlers was an individual by the name of Paul Bilzerian a businessman, real estate investor, and corporate takeover specialist, who by abusing these loopholes managed to make upwards of $400 million in certain specific years. Still made 400 million that year, you know, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bilzerian had been so successful that he decided to set up a trust fund for his two kids, Daniel and Adam Bilzerian, who at the time were both younger than 10 years old. Now, whether the trust fund was set up under the guise of compassion or the security of his kids' futures, there was somewhat of a catch to the fund. Much of the money in there had possibly come from illegal activity. He's indicted for like tax and security fraud. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. In 1989, Paul Bilzerian was convicted of fraud, conspiracy, and making false statements to Wall Street governing bodies. Your father was a corporate takeover specialist. He went to jail for his business practice. Much of his fortune had been made illegally. Paul Bilzerian was ordered to pay his entire net worth of $62 million to the government as well as serve 13 months in prison. Well, what about the rest so, though? how did you find out he was going to jail? Can we go on away? And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, oh, well, you know, we didn't get this appeal. So it's safe to say that by age Chat, 10... Guys, do they really have all the numbers in every fucking cent that's hidden somewhere? Those of these guys, like, have a bunch of money, like, everywhere, dude, and some of it is bound to seep through the cracks for sure, dude. His son, Daniel Bilzerian, didn't exactly have the greatest role model when it came to being honest in business. But the story doesn't end there. By 1991, two years after his conviction, Paul Bilzerian filed for bankruptcy, a bizarre move considering just two years previously he had a net worth of $62 million. Where could the money have gone? Well, this is where things get a bit grey, but it seems as though much of the money was put into the trust fund set up for Adam and Dan Bilzerian. Wait By 1997, a minute. the trust fund was worth around $12 million, which puts Dan Bilzerian's net worth at $6 million by the age of 17, assuming a 50-50 split between him and his brother. Safe to say a pretty decent head start. Wait, him and his brother or him and the... Guys, is that, is that, is that straight, straight up or is there no tax on it? In life you comparative don't... to his peers. Well, I guess like a bank account. So now that we've so set no the scene for Dan Bilzerian's life in the beginning, let's progress a little bit here. Paul that Bilzerian works. going to jail began somewhat of a chain reaction for what would happen to Dan Bilzerian really? through his teenage years. The imprisonment of his father led Dan Bilzerian to get excessively bullied at school, which he described as traumatizing. I sucked, man. I, you know, you got to go to school, and all these kids are making fun of you, and your dad's going to jail. It's like I was 
kind of traumatizing moment. The result of the bullying and perhaps a lack of guidance from a father figure in the household caused Dan to lose interest in school, slacking off and being kicked out in the seventh grade. I mean, look, I got kicked out of school, seventh grade, so I ended up living with I my aunt and uncle. Dan Bilzerian then went to military school, then back to public sucks, school, though? where Dan would make somewhat of a stupid decision, ultimately landing him in prison. I got thrown in jail my senior year, so I didn't really have a senior <laughs> What do you year. go to jail for? At the age of 17, Dan was kicked out of his senior year of high school for having a machine gun and shotgun in the back of his car. Not only was Dan kicked out of school, he was also thrown in jail for the incident. I got thrown in jail um, my senior year of high school, so I didn't graduate. So with the little information we have on Dan Bilzerian's early years, it's safe to say that he wasn't really suited to school. So what could be the best alternative to school for Dan? Well, I mean, he could have gotten a job on a construction site or maybe a local fast food place, but neither of those seemed somewhat appropriate for his personality type. So instead, Dan Bilzerian decided to join the military with the hope of becoming a Navy SEAL at the age of 18. But there was a problem here. Started running, I got an overuse injury, turned into a stress fracture. As soon as Dan Bilzerian began military training, well, he been... fractured both of his legs from overuse, assumably from training too hard. Now this was an awful outcome for Dan, considering he was about to join the military. And most individuals would have just given up at that point of breaking both your legs. But what happened next did nothing besides display the insane work ethic and resilience of Dan Bilzerian. He went through Navy SEAL Hell Week, stereotypically the most brutal week in the entirety of the military on two broken legs. Look. Just give me a shot. I'm already here. Like, let me just train. Um, what's the worst that can happen? He's like, I'll bet you a hundred bucks you don't make it through hell. Your legs are fucking destroyed. Like, I can't believe you can walk. I'm like, so you crushed your own legs to get off the boat and then tried to get into SEAL training. I made it two days before graduation, and I got rolled all the way back to the beginning. And my uh, the officer in charge of my class, he didn't really like me, so he had me on watch every single I'll night. Do the whole course again. So they rolled me all the way back. Did the whole. He again. couldn't even find excuses the third time. He just admin dropped me. I didn't even know that was a good thing. I didn't even know you could get admin dropped. But just as displayed, after everything, Dan was unable to complete military training owing to his injuries. Dan had to drop out of the military, at the time being devastating, but later describing his military dropout to be a blessing in disguise. At around age 22, after having to leave the military, Dan Bilzerian decided to go to college, where he would learn the skill that would apparently lead to his financial freedom. I, uh, I went to college, went to UF. And that's where you learned how to play poker? Yeah, my brother taught me, and then uh, I was playing in college, I was playing like some online stuff. I had a couple of fraternity brothers that were real into it, and they taught me a little bit. And... Do you remember how we mentioned that Dan Bilzerian had a brother towards the start of our story? Well, that brother, an individual by the name of Adam Bilzerian, happened to be a professional poker player. In college, my brother taught me how to play poker. After receiving $6,000 from his honorable military discharge, Dan Bilzerian began playing poker. You know, I was getting the GI Bill and the uh, VA was paying me and I was getting grants and everything for, uh, for school. And so I was making pretty good money for a college student. Dan began by playing with his brother, then with college friends, then finally online. But in the beginning, Dan wasn't very good because only one year after beginning, in his second year of college, Dan went broke. Went broke my sophomore year. So what was his solution? Not to stop gambling and, you know, make money with a guaranteed method, but instead to sell three guns to fund more gambling. I actually had to like sell three of my guns. Um, and then I took that money and went and like played on this gambling boat. And while this sounds like the stereotypical pathway of a problem gambler, this would actually prove to be one of the smartest choices Dan would make in his early life. I sold three guns for 750 bucks, played on this gambling boat for a week, turned it into 10,000, went to Vegas, and then turned that into 187,000 at Bellagio after playing for three weeks straight. Never forget it. And this is where the real rise would begin for Dan Bilzerian. Apparently after turning $750 into 187,000. But it also happened to be the same time where the skepticism would begin for Dan Bilzerian's book, apparent book, book, book. poker skills. All in all, while Dan did play very aggressive, I wouldn't say that he played all that great. In fact, there was some serious button clicking going on in this match. I think that maybe he could beat some high stakes, very soft live games, but on the internet, he's a fish in the water. Many of Dan Bilzerian's poker games have been absolutely torn apart by real poker pros, showing how awful Dan is at the game. This has led many people to question the legitimacy of Dan Bilzerian's actual source of wealth, which will be important for later parts of the video. Dan states to have beaten one individual for 54 million and two other individuals for $10 million. Guys, as a teenager, also was the picture with the big titties, okay? And the boats, okay? And the yachts, I didn't give a fuck with you guys' money. I was like, dude, I don't give a shit. This is kind of badass, and I'm kind of bricked up.
Fucking it. Like I beat one guy for 54 million and... 54 million? Yeah. Stating that he was able to beat them because the poker pros just weren't that good back in the day. Dan Bilzerian's apparent poker escapades continued up until the year 2010, the year when the life of Dan Bilzerian would really take off. So here's a recap of the story so far. Dan goes to military, drops out, goes to college, learns to play poker, and apparently makes millions of dollars between the age of 25 and 30, which is where we'll continue our story. Now, despite being a multi-millionaire by 30 years old, Dan's life wasn't all smooth sailing, because in 2011, Dan broke up with his Playboy model girlfriend just after moving to LA. I was dating this one girl, and uh, she was a Playboy playmate. We ended up breaking up. Now, while on the surface this was clearly a negative, Dan instead saw it as a positive, because his newly single status provided an opportunity to do whatever he wanted whenever he wanted fulfilling his bucket list and i was single and i was just like you know what f it. i'm just kind of kind of like do bucket list shit. like whatever I, <laughs> like whatever i wanted to do when i was a kid i'm just gonna f do it you know and i just did and i but there's something else to quickly touch on before we go any further 2011 also happened to coincidentally be the same year where he was finally able to access his multi-million dollar trust fund as left uh oh wait a minute wait, wait what Incidentally, be the same year where he was finally able to access his multi-million dollar When you're 30, I thought it was when you're 18. So, guys, I have to pee like crazy and I'm interested in this video. I'm gonna watch it. I'm, I don't wanna let it play on Mangana. Guys, give me 48 seconds. Wait, three, two, one. Uh, count, count, count. Guys, it doesn't count. Guys, guys, it doesn't count, chat guys. The last drop won't come out. Trust fund as left from his dad. Dan Bilzerian later claimed to have only taken a very small amount and given the rest back, saying that he didn't really need or care about the money. I, I took I took like a little bit from that and gave the rest away. But to me this seems a no bit fishy shots. for obvious reasons, especially considering in another interview he said he didn't take any and just gave it to his brother. Did you get a trust from him? I did, but I gave it to my brother. Regardless, wherever the money came from, Dan Bilzerian was absolutely minted by 2011. And as a fresh bachelor, just wanted to do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. Dan began posting pictures of his insane lifestyle to the photo sharing application Instagram beginning in May 2012. Oh. Dan began posting photos not to get famous. Was it, was it part of a master plan or was it just fun? No, man, I was just... But it was like never like really to become famous, you know what I mean? It was just kind of like, you know, I was just doing my thing and... You know, we were getting pictures here and there. But rather to get back uh, into his girlfriend. It was kind of like a f you to her. Show poker pros that he was just some rich idiot. I wanted to be the rich idiot. I didn't want to be the guy that hung out with poker players. Like, I didn't want people to think I was good. As well as the possibility of attracting other women now that he was single. Uh, and that was really like the whole, like, start of this thing was just to kind of, you know, subtly brag online and get laid easier with less effort. And social media was like kind of a tool for that. Dan began by posting fairly minor photos such as random photos with his brother, his cars, and him feeding chickens. But as time progressed, began posting more outrageous pictures of him with different girls, oh, private jets, oh. and an unachievable lifestyle. Now, for obvious reasons, this started to pique a lot of interest. Who was this crazy jack dude with a beard living a 16-year-old bucket list lifestyle with all these hot girls and just posting it to Instagram for fun? Was this guy legit? Was it all fake? Was he paying the girls? Well, these questions caused people to follow and get invested in the crazy life of Dan Bilzerian. The life of Dan Bilzerian began to spread like wildfire with every single male between 15 and 25 asking their friends, Yo, have you seen this insane Dan Bilzerian guy? 
As time progressed, the ridiculousness of the post steadily increased, and as the ridiculousness of the post steadily increased, so did his followers. Dembalzerian's oldest Instagram statistics show that by April 2014, a little under two years after beginning Instagram, Dan Bilzerian was already at 1.34 million followers. One year later, in April 2015, he was at 7.5 million followers, then 16 million one year later again. Holy in a space of only four years, Dan Bilzerian went from an unknown poker player to what many media outlets were calling the king of Instagram. By September 2018, Dan Bilzerian's 24 million follower Instagram empire was big enough for Dan to launch his own brand, Ignite, selling apparel, beverages, and various smoking products. The company then went public at $2.50 a share in January 2019. Now it's safe to say that by this point, everything on the surface seemed to be going perfectly for Dan Bilzerian. Unlimited girls, a lifestyle that 99.9% .9 Oh my god, the structure there is gonna... wicked. Hold up. Bilzerian. Unlimited girls... Guys, this is like Roman architecture for real though. This is something you only see like beginning of the 2000s imported glass and whatnot. Holy fuck! Jesus! Girls, a lifestyle that I've seen those! percent of people could only dream Christ. about. Which is beyond belief, his own company. What could possibly go wrong? Well, as soon as Dan's company went public, the stock price fell from $2.50 to $0.54 cents per share, oh. a drop of approximately 80%. All of the company descriptions began to read something about how important it was to be authentic as well as Dan stating this to be his personal philosophy. Yeah, I mean, and I try and be authentic, you know, another one of his quotes, you know, rather than love, rather than fame, rather than money, give me truth. But as the old rule in psychology goes, if you have to go to the effort of telling someone how truthful or authentic you are, chances are you probably mm. aren't that authentic or truthful. Oh. I Ironically, everything about Dan Bilzerian kind of reeked of a lack of truth. His inability to tell the truth about where his money came from, refusing to reveal how much he had won from poker, the true nature of his lifestyle, all factors possibly leading to investors steering clear of his company. And even if he had won all of his money from playing poker rather than inheritance, that would only make his case worse. Because it would show that he didn't have any experience running a company and much of his initial wealth was owed to luck, not good business skills. But honestly, this was only the beginning of the end for Dan Bilzerian. It was about to get way worse. Us. According oh. to a lawsuit filed this week, Dan Bilzerian rents his house and charges the rest of his six-figure lifestyle to a credit card that someone else pays off. Ignite lost $50 million last year and is likely to fail. Now I think it goes without saying, everyone knew that there would be a point where Dan's insane lifestyle would catch up with him. Whether it be from old age, his money running out, or even possible future mental health problems stemming from years of partying, we all had that same feeling of, yeah, this looks mad, but there's no way that all of this can be real. Which in July 2020 would be proven to be the correct judgment as an huh? overwhelming array of evidence began to come forward hinting at the illegitimacy of Dan Bilzerian's lifestyle. The evidence began with Curtis Heffernan, former Ignite president, stating that he had been fired from Ignite for illegitimate purposes. Within the lawsuit was a stupid amount of information regarding Bilzerian's ridiculous spending habits, including a $65,000 Star Wars set, a $75,000 paintball field, $26,000 on boosting Instagram followers as well as paying for the various models seen on his Instagram. But the funniest part of this whole whole thing was that his huge mansion was actually rented for two hundred thousand dollars per Got month. It. Now why is guys this is like the um, it looks like it's uh right next to fucking Notch's uh mansion. Rent no? at two hundred thousand dollars per month. Now, why is this so hilarious? Well, literally a week beforehand, Dan Bilzerian had shown Kevin O'Leary like on the fucking same street to have paid sixty-five million for it. He reportedly paid a mind-boggling sixty-five million dollars for this mega mansion. And when Kevin O'Leary asked him about the tax rebates when he purchased it, he gets pretty uncomfortable for obvious reasons. Can you write any of this off? Because it's really promoting your brand and your lifestyle. I mean, I have to talk to my accountant about all of it. I don't know. <laughs> now, this whole ordeal was basically the nail in the coffin for Dan Bilzerian's uh. credibility. Anyone who thought, eh, he seems kind of fake, but there also seems to be elements of truth, then decided, yeah, this dude is a total fraud. But wait, it gets weirder. In September 2020, an article came forward claiming that Dan Bilzerian's dad, Paul Bilzerian, was allegedly running Ignite from behind the scenes. On June 6, 2020, during a call with Paul Bilzerian, 
Paul freaking Bilzerian. Which just adds another level of dodgy to the whole ordeal well, how? considering that Paul Bilzerian is not allowed to have anything to do with public companies following his prior conviction with the US government. Perhaps explaining why Ignite is listed on the Canadian stock exchange rather than the US stock exchange. And just to add a cherry on top of the cake, Dan Bilzerian claimed to speak to his dad only four or five times per year. I talked to him um, probably four or five times a year. Which is interesting considering his dad is allegedly running the company behind the scenes. Ever since all of this information has come out, the stock price of Ignite has gone from 90 cents per share to 26 cents, a drop of approximately 70% over the last four months. After Ignite recently announced yearly losses of $50 million, many are speculating that Ignite is done and will potentially be bankrupt within the next few weeks. I believe that Ignite is no longer, I think Ignite is dead in the water. We're just waiting for the official announcement. They have no cash. They have no operations. Nothing is going on with Ignite. It's game over. So if you're watching this in the future, maybe you already know the outcome. And that's kind of where we're... I mean, guys, I don't want to be weird, guys, but who's the Chad? This guy or that guy? I mean, I don't, I don't know. You tell me who the Chad is. The outcome. <laughs> and that's kind of where we're up to with Dan Bilzerian, the mighty king of Instagram. From a school dropout, to a Navy SEAL, to apparently a professional gambler, to the king of Instagram, to a CEO, to being exposed as a liar, to having his company on the brink of bankruptcy. I'm interested in people with the ability to climb the hierarchy better than anyone else. But what I don't like is liars. And that's exactly what Dan Bilzerian has been exposed for. A man who has built his whole life on a series of lies. Claiming to own the $65 million mansion when he didn't. Claiming to be a professional poker player when no records show that he ever was. Being extremely extremely grey around everything when it comes to finances and where his money came from. The whole human psyche yeah, is evolved. Yeah, I feel like anybody who says that they own any of these houses in LA, the, like the big, big mansions or whatever, I think this is what it is in Vegas, I could be wrong though. Um, guys, where, where's this house at? Is it LA? All these big ones that are like 60, 80, most of them are, are just like rented out, I feel like. Now, now people fucking own, own this shit. Well, literally a- They sell like fucking garbage. Nobody buys this shit. Climb the hierarchy better than anyone else. But what I don't like is liars. And that's exactly what Dan Bilzerian has been exposed for. A man who has built his whole life on a series of lies. Claiming to own the $65 million mansion when he didn't. Claiming to be a professional poker player when no records show that he ever was. Being extremely grey around everything when it comes to finances and where his money came from. The whole human psyche is evolved around figuring out who we can and can't trust. And those who can't be trusted are naturally sent to the bottom, even if they do have other admirable qualities. And this has been the fate of Dan Bilzerian. Years and years of lies. Growing and growing to hit one big pinnacle in mid 2020 and it's safe to say that this one might bring him undone over the long term i think as time goes on people are gonna you know they're gonna start to see you know who i am and mm. and you know that stuff will you know come through in interviews and and like i said is you know the more people see and the more i do the more they'll actually get to know who you are mm. um guys apparently chad there's somebody making a video to expose the fact that I'm not the gaming warlord Jews attend number one in St. Colossus build muscular crazy handsome Zillian successful been in worldwide juicer pharaoh chieftain commander I guys I think it's kind of weird I think, I think it's kind of weird that they're, that they're doing that in my name guys I think it's weird to do that in my name I think it's kind of weird they're doing that